Hello, everybody. My name is Michael Hatt with RLE Technologies. Thank you for joining me during this uh, review of the impacts of Wing Wireless. Uh, today, what we'll cover is uh, a, a re-review of really what RLE's Wing Wireless is, uh, what can you do with it, and uh, how can Wing be deployed to make environmental conditions more tangible. Uh, there's, uh, there's a variety of ways that uh, Wing can be deployed, but uh, two in particular are for control integration as well as being leveraged as a service tool. I think both have uh, a lot of validity in today's environment, and uh, we'll review some of these uh, here today. So uh, to get started, RLE's Environment Monitoring Package uh, system as an architecture looks like this. So uh, we have a variety of tools to be able to be deployed uh, in an environment that allows you to gain visibility, monitoring, control, uh, or even just uh, the, the simple effect of uh, being able to understand what's going on in any particular environment. Today, obviously, we'll touch more on the Wing Wireless, but did feel it was important to make sure to, to talk a little bit about the uh, F200, which is a network device. Uh, very slick in the sense that it's capable of uh, monitoring and measuring temperature, humidity, leak detection, has eight digital inputs. Uh, a few use cases for that device is uh, typically in data closets or other small critical spaces that would require some protection. And uh, uh, in the building automation community, I've also seen it used as a uh, alarm monitoring tool for the boiler groups that, uh, that, that want to understand uh, pipe temperature in their, uh, 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 their hot water supply and return lines. So uh, being able to wrap one of these sensors up on a pipe and alarm on, uh, on a condition of the pipe getting too cold uh, would allow a contractor service group or facility group to understand that you're probably not getting the heat into that hot water system that you're looking for. So uh, better to alarm on it early than too late, uh, which is uh, ultimately what we're capable of. And the, uh, the, the connection to the camera there isn't because we sell cameras. It's because I wanted to uh, uh, isolate the fact that we can take any of these environmental conditions and trigger the relay output on the F200 to cause the condition of the camera to start recording. Obviously, uh, network guys don't want to uh, deal with the bandwidth of uh, constant recording 24-7, uh, mainly on a condition that would require some service uh, or additional visibility and, and recording of, uh, of uh, uh, that environment during that condition. So leak detection, obviously, is, uh, is a pretty critical uh, piece to the puzzle as well. Every facility has pipes running in it, and um, unfortunately, it's not if, it's when uh, a leak occurs, and uh, certainly have some options there that can integrate into an architecture Again, whether that's coming back to our enterprise system, the FMS, uh, which has the ability to integrate up to 32 devices, has uh, the, the maximum capacity to connect up to 104 physical inputs, has some graphing capability, scheduling, as well as uh, alarm capabilities. Uh, so nice migration path to be able to aggregate data there and include into your network architecture. And then on the bottom is the power fail monitor. A lot of critical spaces exist out there. Uh, simply plug this guy in. And uh, should that outlet lose power, trips the uh, relay, which could be tied back to an F200 uh, or another network I.O. device uh, to allow a cause and effect. But today what we'll review a little bit more of is the uh, Wing Wireless and, and how and why it's important to deploy, uh, specifically the ease of, of deployment, uh, simplicity, and, and manageability of the device itself. Uh, the battery life is uh, phenomenal, up to 12 years, with, uh, with a transmission rate of anywhere from 10 to 20 seconds. Uh, uh, in addition to that, the flexibility of sensing options, temperature, temperature, humidity, uh, calculated dew point, differential air pressure is a big one. And the other third, uh, the, the other big one that I'll also uh, review today is the analog input. Uh, there's a lot of folks today that are trying to get a better understanding of indoor air quality and, and some of the other toxic uh, uh, environmental conditions that could cause catastrophes. So uh, the environmental input or the analog uh, transmitter has the ability to accept an output from any sensor in the market that produces a 0 to 5 volt, 0 to 10 volt, or a 4 to 20 milliamp output of that sensor. So uh, great flexibility with the capability that that has to deliver the, uh, the data points uh, for the purpose of either control, monitoring, alarming, uh, whatever is necessary to drive the outcome. Wing Wireless, uh, another reason why Wing has been so popular with, uh, with our customer base is because of its range. Um, you know, it's, it's got uh, the flexible sensors that, that obviously can connect to a lot of different stuff. 
but it's its ability to uh, uh, penetrate the walls with the 900 megahertz uh, radios that we have built in and the uh, capability to extend that network with a range extender. So line of sight, you can expect to see roughly up to a 600-foot range with a sensor to a wing manager. Through uh, two, three walls, you're probably looking closer to the 200-foot range uh, reliably, again. And uh, so the architecture is the sensor directly to the wing manager or the range extender directly to the wing manager. It's not a hop to a hop to a hop. Uh, we're looking to uh, uh, provide this great flexibility uh, with the tools necessary to be able to deploy in a flexible nature. But some of the headaches with wireless historically have been uh, resolved with uh, tools like the Wing Manager, the user interface with the wireless network metrics, uh, the battery alarms, uh, things like that, uh, that really do simplify and build confidence in its ability to uh, produce the result you're looking for. A few applications that uh, I think the Wing Manager really fits well within in this control environment for a lot of these system integrators and facility groups. You can't always pull wire everywhere you want to get the uh, data points that you're looking for. Sometimes the uh, network architecture already exists. It's an existing BACnet communications link or could be something else, right? Uh, but ultimately what we're trying to accomplish is allowing you to aggregate the data so that your field controllers and systems have the ability to gain uh, those data points to control those physical spaces based on the uh, desired outcome required. Uh, so the way that this would work is uh, deploying some of the temp and temp humidity, differential air pressure, digital inputs, wireless leak detection, uh, any of those transmitters we talked about along with the analog would talk wirelessly back to the wing manager. The wing manager would then push that data up to the enterprise building automation system uh, directly. That would likely be the, uh, uh, the route you would take unless you wanted to pull it directly into a field controller. Certainly uh, an option there as well. But, uh, but after it gets to the enterprise building automation system, now you have those data points to impact change and control into those specific field uh, controllers that are already on an existing BACnet MSTP link. Uh, or it could be some other link, but uh, obviously getting the data to the enterprise and then allowing the enterprise to, um, to take that data for the purpose of control into those spaces uh, is, is really a, a great option. So, you know, being able to leverage wireless, even in a hybrid approach, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of jobs that have been implemented that maybe it was a little bit and it just didn't quite have all of the CO2 monitoring or some of the additional temp humidity or some extra door contacts, or maybe there's a smoke sensor that you want to put somewhere uh, in, a, in a different space that uh, can be a secondary alarm to a security panel, right? Uh, all of these are options to, uh, to be deployed to really optimize system performance inside of building automation. A conversation I recently had uh, uh, regarding our wing, uh, wing tool, uh, wing wireless network gateway, is leveraging it as a service tool. There's massive campus environments that exist out there that some have been upgraded with completely new DDC controls. Many of them are still legacy controls that are just limping along and, and operating as, as needed. Uh, but if they had some additional data points or some additional visibility, uh, you'd have that capability to even commission or reprogram uh, the existing legacy infrastructure without necessarily doing the complete uh, retrofit. Obviously, that's a, a large expense. It's a, a disruption to the space and, uh, and, and very costly in the, in the sense of time and manpower and, and obviously capital dollars. So uh, being able to leverage a tool like Wing to get information like CO2 and, and carbon monoxide and leveraging other data points, even like wireless leak detection in the sense of uh, some of the commercial buildings we've worked with, commercial office space, things are going to change. Uh, you know, and, and, and the building owners and facility groups, they want, they want the impact, but they can't afford to have the people in the building and the disruption uh, into the space. But more important than ever, they need to know that they are providing a safe environment for its occupants. Uh, so we've, uh, we've been contacted uh, recently here by a mall group that was uh, trying to validate building pressures and understanding how and why doors were being left open and uh, causing some of the problems inside of their condition space, uh, which we were able to help identify simply by deploying a wing wireless uh, toolkit 
uh, to understand what's going on there. Hospitals and, and nursing homes, and nursing home was a, was a big project I had just worked on as well, where we, uh, uh, we proposed putting a 150 wireless temp humidity transmitters throughout a, a three-story space and uh, a couple range extenders and the wing manager so that its, it's current state in the pneumatics uh, that can't afford to go and replace all of that right now. So the goal was to go ahead and start gaining understanding of what's going on in some of those spaces and create a migration path that's affordable and doable. Uh, so being able to understand these uh, these conditions makes it certainly a, a, a tool that 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 can drive an outcome that is uh, um, um, desired by the end user. And then even inside of some of the industrial plants that we've uh, we've been able to deploy our, our technology, Wing Wireless really is a is a great tool set for that because uh, not only can you do the uh, wireless leak detection even in some of those chemical environments. We have uh, some cable that's cable, uh, capable of uh, being a little more resistant to those nasty nitric acids and things like that. Uh, so, you know, obviously protecting the health and well-being of the, of the people and its occupants, but let's not forget about the infrastructure as well. So, um, you know, we, we, we have a, a, a neat application that I worked with uh, a group recently with a pneumatic system that uh, had a damper that would be pushing scrap metal from zone A to zone B, and they didn't know how often and when and you know how long it was running and pushing into zone B, which was causing a, a mess in the area that was uh, uh, couldn't afford to have you know the mess in, in place. So simply what we did was put a, a door contact because uh, it was a, a damper. It was either open or closed. It was either to the left or to the right. And uh, uh, so we knew it was either uh, on the left when it was closed and on the right when it was open and uh, pushing to zone B, which, which now they were able to identify how long uh, the uh, scrap metal was being pushed into a space and, uh, and, 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 and should it be. Uh, you know, there's, uh, there's obviously some concern from a personnel perspective and a safety perspective uh, that we were also able to help resolve as a, as a default uh, a consequence of, of some of the actions and out-of-the-box thinking that we were able to deploy. Uh, some of the, uh, as a service tool, you know, again, thinking about commercial office space and residentials, co co condo type scenarios, uh, where you have a, a lot of people in spaces with uh, toilet flushes and, and sinks running now more than ever, um, you know, buildings in some cases are being used as offices when they were supposed to be residential and they were uh, marked to be able to have X amount <coughs> or expected to have X amount of uh, water usage in any one of these spaces. So we deployed a, a, a system with 40 points of water leak detection uh, with, uh, with some of our wing wireless, which uh, was simple to deploy and uh, uh, reliable. In this, with the signal strength throughout the building because of the 900 megahertz and its capability to penetrate walls and, and through uh, multiple floors. So a uh, fun tool to be able to play with and, uh, and use. So let me show you a little bit of the web user interface and specifically a couple of the, uh, uh, the, the transmitters that I, I think make a lot of sense to be leveraged today as well as in the future uh, for some of the visibility uh, that you're looking for. So getting started and sharing a little more about the Wing Manager, uh, very sophisticated and elegant uh, uh, layout here with a web user interface. All of your uh, navigation tree on the left with uh, all the sensors here in the middle, uh, some alarm capabilities and uh, alarm management and, and system configuration and all of that communications as well. As mentioned, uh, some of the wireless network metrics. These are so critical in any space that you're going to deploy wireless. Being able to see it in real time per sensor uh, for wherever it is you're going to place it and see the impact that it has, uh, the closer to negative 30 dBm, the better. So when it starts reaching out to the 80s, 90s, even higher, or technically lower, I guess, with the negative, um, uh, you, would, uh, you would expect to start seeing some uh, droppage of uh, reliability of signal. So that's where you go ahead and start either moving the, the transmitter slightly, if a little here, uh, to the left, to the right, uh, or that's when the, the game plan is to go ahead and start looking at deploying some range extenders to really give you that uh, 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 capability to expand the overall network. Uh, so the wing manager does have the capability to connect up to 400 transmitters uh, with, uh, with at least one range extender included. 
Uh, otherwise, it's up to 250 out of the box. All of the alarm capabilities are available, email notifications, things like that, uh, trending, uh, all capable. But a few particularly sensors that I wanted to focus on today uh, was the uh, wing DAP, uh, the wing differential air pressure. So understanding building pressure, positive, negative, in any particular space sometimes isn't as easy or as tangible as you'd like. Uh, so we have, a, uh, we have a differential air pressure sensor here uh, that is uh, capable of providing information to an end user or network group. Uh, here are some of the network metrics. <clears throat> Getting into the sensor configuration, just wanted to show the simplicity of the user interface here. Its ability to go ahead and name the sensor, give it a location. Uh, should, uh, should it fall offline for any period of time, uh, you may want to set a, an alarm delay, uh, maybe give it a minute or two. That way you, you minimize any false alarms that you may be getting. Um, alarm notifications over, under, obviously that's, uh, that's all good. And then even the, the wing manager has two relay outputs that you'd be able to trigger some other function on. So uh, based on a condition, you can trigger the, the output uh, being a relay to another system, a security system. And since I'm here, I'll share this with you too. I know the system integrators love this. All of your system uh, sensor objects are available via any of the protocols that you would like to see, BACnet, Modbus, or SNMP. So looking at the differential air pressure sensors, uh, you know, we're, what we want to accomplish is, is gaining visibility and, and, and making this information tangible. Uh, you can also see here this uh, uh, battery uh, is alarmable. So uh, generally speaking, we, we kind of default to the 2.75 volts is, uh, is where you would prob <clears throat> probably want to alarm when, uh, uh, when it gets to that threshold. Uh, so you can uh, rapidly deploy any kind of uh, serviceability to that, uh, that, that environment. So I talk a little bit about the flexibility of the wing analog transmitter. Uh, RLE had a, had a stance to say instead of trying to create every possible type of sensor that we would like to create for the market that is looking for these, instead of, uh, uh, let's build off of this, the, the, the infrastructure that others have built. So let's take the output of those transmitters and sensors and push them into this wireless system so that we can still get that data point two, three, four hundred feet away without pulling wire. but but yet still have the flexibility to really connect any kind of a sensor. So I've talked a little bit about the CO2 and carbon monoxide. Those are two in particular that I know that I've personally set up and, uh, and, and have uh, connected to our wing platform uh, to validate you know, its capability and, 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 and ease of really setup. So we have a quick start guide on the wing analog that I did want to share uh, just because there's a few steps in how the wing analog is built. And uh, looking at the wing analog here, what, uh, what ultimately we want to accomplish is uh, what is the output signal that we're producing? All right. Once we identify that, is it a 4 to 20 milliamp, 0 to 5, 0 to 10 volt? Uh, there's little jumpers on here that help to isolate how it wants to calculate the data, right? And after you've identified that, simple little equation here on the left-hand side for a 4 to 20 milliamp or a 0 to 5, just follow this equation. Uh, type in your high, your low, uh, do the math for the offset and gain, and ultimately the values that you want to see, whether that's on the LCD of the uh, physical sensor or uh, the output that the sensor is producing, will match what the actual uh, uh, value is. So uh, having done this a few times, uh, follow the math, and uh, it's worked every time. So having this flexibility built into the, uh, the analog transmitter in and of itself is, uh, is pretty powerful. And as you can see, it's a simple 3.6 volt lithium battery. I want to also note the uh, channel selection guide uh, button, which is uh, effectively allowing you to, to, to change from channel A to channel B. So sometimes in different environments, uh, there's some noise or uh, uh, confliction of uh, the signals bouncing or it's a dense environment where you may have two separate uh, wing managers that you want to keep those sensors separate from. So we built in the option to go ahead and, and put it on an on a, a channel or a B channel. Simply clicking the button three times will we'll switch the, the channel of the transmitter. Obviously, make sure you make the, uh, the transition in the, the range extender and the wing manager as well to keep all of the sensors functioning properly. So simple math uh, to go ahead and identify which sensor output you want to connect and deliver that to 
uh, your automation system or service tool uh, for, uh, for the values that you're looking for. To show you a little bit of it, I will go to the, the search bar here with all the sensors we have on our network and, uh, and connect to an analog transmitter just to show you uh, some of its versatility. We have uh, a current sensor. Uh, Hawkeye 922 that's currently set up on our wing analog. It's a self-powered current sensor. So imagine the possibilities of having a wireless energy management platform that can give you some, some basic uh, data right away, right now, without a whole lot of effort. Uh, obviously, please be qualified to be able to do this uh, when connecting with anything with electrical. Uh, so, you know, but uh, ultimately, it's, it's pretty simple to set up. And as you can see, if I click here, uh, there's some basic trending going on of, uh, of what is going on in that particular environment. And again, since it's a wireless platform, uh, we're looking at the data value of what's happening at the time of that transmission. So you can see the age of the data uh, trending up, 10.7. 2.8 means it just sent a packet of data back to the wing manager uh, for, uh, for viewing and, uh, and uh, accessibility. So, Pretty, pretty real time for any kind of a wireless platform, especially since it has up to a 12-year battery life. But I did want to showcase that because of its uh, versatility and its ability to connect to a variety of sensors. Here is another, uh, took a couple screenshots of, uh, of a colleague of mine, Chris, who had set up a, uh, a CO2 sensor on his wing system leveraged a wing analog transmitter with CO2. Uh, zero to 2,000 parts per million was the, uh, was the scale of the sensor. So adding all that math in, it had a display. As soon as Chris was done punching all that in, what showed up on our screen was what showed up on his screen. So it was pretty powerful to see uh, the flexibility and, and really the simplicity of doing it for the first time, uh, not having much trouble at all. So I did want to showcase that for you real fast. Another screen of uh, some of the trending that this particular CO2 sensor was doing. Uh, so, you know, it, as long as it's operational, you'll have some trends. It looks like he shut that off uh, for a little period of time, but when he turned it all back on, everything was working and trended. So, you know, imagine being able to have this information when you don't have access to an automation system, or you don't have an automation system, or you're a servicing contractor trying to understand how much fresh air do I need to bring into a building. Nothing's worse than having too much CO2 in a classroom and having kids fall asleep or in a, in a conference room in a business meeting uh, where I think we've all uh, entertained uh, the conversation and, and had a heavy lunch after some training or something and just uh, just had too, too much CO2 in the space causing everybody to get tired. Uh, so being able to have this data brought up to your control system for it to impact how it's operating the environment I think is pretty critical and pretty awesome. So. Uh, using it, again, as a control platform or even leveraging it as a service tool, I think, are very viable options in, in how the wing system can be deployed. <clears throat> this last, uh, this last uh, slide here I wanted to show just uh, really the offset and gain on the bottom of the math that he had uh, performed gave him these values. And again, simply by putting these values in, he was able to achieve the visibility and really make CO2 tangible simply by connecting this to the wing manager. Uh, so again, offering some suggestions on getting flexible and, and, and you know, thinking a little out of the box and how to deploy systems to give you the data that you're looking for. Certainly agree that a lot of handheld tools will, uh, will give you that data point right now. But what happens in an hour? What happens at midnight? What happens two days from now? Uh, you know, the wing manager can be left in place for a short period of time or a permanent install and be part of a migration path that I think makes a lot of sense for a lot of end users and, uh, and is affordable. I think that's, uh, that's just as important to, to make sure to, to state, uh, especially in how you want to leverage the, the technology. So working with the, uh, some of my uh, service contractor friends, uh, they asked me, well, what, what would a service tool look like? What, what would we have to put together? Uh, in order to walk into almost any building and gain visibility of what's going on. I said, well, uh, there's a few parts. Now, some of these are uh, miscellaneous quantities, so you can start with one or you can have 20 or 100. 
but wanted to uh, wanted to give you a good spread of what I believe you can deploy in any building to give you the visibility that you're looking for for the purpose of enabling an outcome. Uh, as long as you have a wing manager, you got a range extender, I can walk into any building today with those two pieces and any of these sensors and validate that I can get a signal strength, meaning that I can walk in anywhere and, and gain access to the temperature and humidity information. I can deploy uh, the differential air pressure uh, transmitters and actually physically see what's going on right now and the impact it has over time as HVAC is opening, uh, turning on and off, as well as doors are opening and closing and, and the impact that that has for what period of time uh, that these, uh, these would be in place. The wing analog, as I just discussed a little bit more in detail, is uh, the flexibility that you have. Uh, being able to plug in any, uh, any sensor output that's a 0 to 5, 0 to 10, or a 4 to 20 milliamp, you can use the same analog transmitter to get that value out and into, the, uh, in into a tangible form in any type of uh, building that you're looking for. So again, that could be a CO2, it could be a carbon monoxide, it could be a CT, it could be some other sensor. Uh, leveraging the wing thermistor or the RTD could also be an opportunity to put a duct probe, 10K type 2, or even a, uh, a refrigerator or freezer probe, uh, right? Uh, with a wireless transmitter back to the wing manager. You now have alarm management inside of some of those environments that I think uh, uh, really can deliver the outcome that you're looking for and protect the environment. So uh, real quick story about the thermistor here. I have, uh, uh, I have a, a, a regular refrigerator uh, here in my basement, keeps some of my beverages cold. Uh, but I think there's a lot of other businesses that have these types of refrigerators as well. But what they probably don't realize is the cycle time. So uh, the refrigerator cycles, and, and I found out as I recorded some of mine that it cycled down to 20 deg 25 degrees, and it, its high point was 42 degrees. So on average, I was getting cold drinks around 32 degrees, but what if you have a, a product in this refrigerator that can't get down to 25 degrees, otherwise it changes the state of its contents and, 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 and makes it nonproductive or not safe? Um, you know, what if, what if some of the, uh, the, the, the stuff inside of the refrigerator or, uh, that you're looking at is recommended really to stay consistently at uh, 35 degrees? Well, what happens when it goes to 40-something degrees for any length of time? Sure, it drops back down to 25, but some of those commercial refrigerators hold their temperature steady versus the, the, the kind of home residential refrigerator that most people wouldn't realize that. I mean, so... Uh, you know, having that capability to be able to see this information and validate this is, uh, I think, just as important as anything. And then also having the digital input to, to trigger any kind of relay closure or a door contact. Uh, you can connect a smoke alarm. You can connect the, the power fail monitor. Uh, you can connect some of our leak detection to trigger the relay output to pull into this digital input to trigger the alarm based on uh, how your architecture is and ability or inability to pull wire. And then obviously the air velocity sensor, I think, is as important as anything uh, to be able to understand the flow of air that's going through any space that you're looking for. Traditionally, we see a lot of these inside of data centers that are looking to optimize system performance. Uh, but obviously, any building environment that, uh, that's pushing cold air or warm air uh, is something that, uh, that can be measured and monitored in a very simple format uh, for a, an affordable cost. So being able to deploy this technology, in my opinion, again, uh, really does improve visibility and, and the ability to plan. Let's not overlook that. Uh, sitting down and having a discussion with your building owners and, uh, and, and operators and understanding what is the if and uh, cause and condition, right? If this happens, then what, right? Uh, you know, so we have that ability to really drive those, those planning discussions and, and really help to plan for those long-term capital improvements as well. Let's not uh, pull the Band-Aid off and uh, right away and, and spend a, a boatload without really understanding what's happening uh, just because you may not like uh, a, a contractor and, and the controls have been challenging, right? Let's understand how can we really leverage some of that information and improve the airflow and the building pressure and the temperature and the relative humidity between 40 and 60. Ultimately, we're not, at, we're not creating the indoor air quality impacts, but we're enabling another system to do that to, to make sure that you're providing a safe and healthy environment for its building occupants. Uh, the enterprise operational effectiveness, I think, is uh, just as important in any critical zone we're protecting as well. Uh, and having the information holistically to be able to deploy 
and uh, and see and make tangible, I think really does help improve the health and safety of a building for its building and its occupants, right? So, you know, you can really make a difference just by, by leveraging some technology in a, in a fairly simple format uh, for the short or long term in a variety of ways. So, you know, ultimately, thank you again for uh, participating and listening to me uh, talk a little bit more about the wing and how you can deploy it. I think there's a lot of value in understanding it and playing with it. So uh, please contact your local uh, uh, contractor partner, distributor partner for a demo. Contact us. We'd be happy to walk through it with you. And, um, you know, should you want to get your hands on one, feel free, let us know. We would, uh, we would certainly enjoy that opportunity to make sure that you're gaining the knowledge and understanding of really how easy it can be instead of being uh, um, kind of sidetracked and cornered into the complicated. So thank you again. Feel free to reach out anytime. Have a great rest of the day.